This week um, we're doing something very esoteric, and, uh, but hopefully by the end of it, it won't look so esoteric as it did at the beginning. It might look uh, a bit more important and of direct significance to, to life. And that is um, quantum physics. <laughs> now, uh, quantum physics is perhaps at the cutting edge of physics in many ways, especially at trying to understand how things work. And underneath quantum physics, uh, like uh, most of physics, is, is mathematics. And uh, in particular, in the quantum area and in later theories trying to explain how everything works, like string theory, which you've probably heard about, um, the role of uh, complex number mathematics or complex analysis. And although the word complex immediately puts us off, it shouldn't. And uh, that's exactly what I want to talk about. Now, this looks complex. So uh, this is what could be considered normal, you know, common or garden physics. Uh, although for most people, that was a garden I'd rather stay out of. I'm going to rub this off and we'll start again and see uh, if we can uh, make it physics a bit more um, accessible. I'd like to introduce um, Dr. Howard Carmichael. Howard, wh what's, what's your position here at Auckland University? So uh, I hold a, a professorship which uh, goes by the name of the Dan Walls Chair of Theoretical Physics. Uh, Dan Walls was a uh, professor here until 1999. And as it turns out, uh, he also was my PhD supervisor. So I worked with him back in the uh, late 70s and early 1980s. Oh, yeah. And what's your particular area of expertise? Uh, expertise. <laughs> Am I an expert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah my, my, uh, my area of interest is, uh, is quantum mechanics broadly uh, and more specifically uh, quantum optics uh, which the two words quantum of course refers to the quantum mechanics and the optics refers to light. So uh, I'm interested in uh, properties of light and the interactions of light with uh, matter, atoms, molecules uh, in those situations where the quantum mechanics really matters. Uh, and uh, although the fundamental theory of light and its interactions does, of course, uh, involve quantum mechanics, uh, much of what we do with, 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 with light, uh, take a photograph of a friend, etc., uh, one doesn't really need to use quantum mechanics at all. So uh, I, I particularly uh, focus on those areas where one does. And uh, what's uh, interesting about such a an activity is, or first, firstly, of course, there are, uh, there are potential applications uh, involving photonics, what we call photonics, uh, and uh, existing and future devices. Uh, but for the theoretical physicist, maybe the, the most in interesting side is that quantum mechanics itself is a strange theory. And uh, through uh, studying uh, things like quantum, quantum optics, uh, photons, their interaction with matter, one can uh, get to think about this strange theory, what it means, uh, and uh, nowadays actually do, do, do experiments which demonstrate the strangeness in, in, in ways that uh, have been known, known about, of course, for a long time, but uh, when quantum mechanics first came into existence, uh, these experiments were called thought experiments because you did it only think about them, uh, whereas nowadays many of those thought experiments can actually be performed. Uh, they've all shown that quantum mechanics works out the way you think it should do, but uh, it would be great if something went wrong, because that's when things really get exciting. But nevertheless, that's, that's what I'm about. Well, um, so basically what you're saying is that you're proving that the theories that came out in the 20s and early 30s, and later, like quantum electrodynamics, you'd, you'd also be very familiar with that. Well, yeah, quantum, quantum, I mean, quantum optics is, 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 the, is like the, uh, the poor cousin of quantum electrodynamics. So it is, a, it is 
if you wanted to use a fancier word, it, it's a part of quantum electrodynamics. Okay. But uh, it's the low energy part. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, it deals with mainly with uh, a visible light, well, actually all the way down to microwaves. So some quantum, quantum optics experiments are actually done with microwaves. And uh, prior to the laser, which, have, which is the workhorse of, of quantum optics, we had a thing called a maser, which is a microwave source of radiation. Uh, but it doesn't deal with the very high energies, which are gamma rays, uh, where, where uh, the relativistic aspects of mechanics become important, and that's where you really need QED, yeah. quantum electrodynamics. Okay. Now, going back to what you said, uh, you're doing experiments showing that, that um, in what we could call real life, uh, quantum mechanics works. So it is real. And uh, it was a thought, it was a good idea, it looked brilliant. Now, it's more than a good idea. It has been proven time and time again in practical application as being real. It's not a theory anymore. It is, uh, in that sense, as real as anything in, in the scientific world today. Am I right? Oh, yeah, you're essentially right about that. Of course, I mean, everything in science, in a way, remains uh, uh, as a theory. Uh, and there are definitely fundamental things uh, which, uh, which we would hope to incorporate into quantum mechanics, which we don't yet know how to do. And so things are incomplete, in particular, uh, the quantum mechanics of gravity uh, is is a, a, a big and outstanding an outstanding problem, uh, and um, uh, quantum mechanics and gravity don't really want to go to go, to go together math ma mathematically. So, but but in terms of uh, phenomena at which uh, to which quantum mechanics has been applied, uh, it hasn't failed yet, uh, and uh, also in those situations where uh, one has explicitly explicitly pursued the stranger aspects of quantum mechanics and its predictions and being able to do that, uh, quantum mechanics has turned out to make the correct predictions. So uh, it, it certainly seems to be uh, a, a, correct, a correct theory. Uh, and it's very hard to believe that it would be supplanted by something else. Uh, it might be uh, expanded uh, and subsumed by a bigger something, something larger. But the, the, the basic approach does seem to be uh, necessary to describe right. the world the way it is. I, I completely accept that. In fact, I would like to take that to its, what I would consider its philosophical implications. So as much as I'm talking to you about physics, which is intimately connected with mathematics, um, I believe that it's gone so far now that the mathematical and physical implications of something like quantum mechanics, quantum electrodynamics, and the problems that have been encountered have philosophical implications as to what we consider reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, after all, philosophy ultimately is what's real. And, and if it's real, how does it, why does it work that way? What's underneath it? Now, um, you mentioned something there that I, I just want to make a note, note on, and that is um, you've, got, um, you've got the quantum world and it's become, through time, uh, very real because it works. Then we have what could be called the relative side of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's mainly associated with someone like Einstein, of course. Oh, relative, uh, the, yeah, relativity re re began re with, relativity with, began with, with Einstein. Yeah. Now Einstein then went from special to general relativity, which was gravity. Gravity, yeah. So over here we have something else that's that's real, and that is gravity. We now believe we understand that, that that's fundamental. So here we have light, um, and we have um, all manner of electromagnetic things, atoms, chemistry, uh, biology, it's all, it's all comes down, quantum mechanics can explain more or less, it's under, it can be seen to be underneath all of those things that we call reality, except this one, can't put it together with, uh, with gravity. Now this is a major, this is a major issue as far as I'm, I, well as anyone in, in the physics area would, as you mentioned right, very early on. So, therefore, our, our, our definition of, of reality um, is, is still not firm 
in that sense. Uh, we're, we're firmer than we were, um, but we've still got problems because reality does encompass gravity, it, and no one has refuted re reality uh, in terms of relativity theory either. Mm -hmm. Einstein's theories have been proven time and time again as, as to be extremely accurate, as has quantum physics, and yet nobody can come up, can put these two together, yet they must be together. Therefore, I put it to you that there is a big question mark in physics and mathematics as to what is underneath both of these, because these can't be fundamental if there's something that we can't put them together. There must be something that brings them together. What is that? Now, this is where I would like us to investigate the R words, reality, real numbers, for instance. And I would like to contrast every, I, I believe that most 99.9% .9 of people, even physicists themselves, maybe yourself, I don't know, believe that reality is basically intimately linked with the real numbers. That's why they're called real numbers. Whereas every single day you are dealing with another number based on what's called I, a small I with a dot on it, mm -hmm. and that I stands for imaginary number. Yeah. Now, I put uh, my basic premise that I'm coming from, as you probably already guessed it, is that actually the imaginary number is real, the, re the real numbers are secondary, not as real. That's my premise. And the complex number that you just mentioned, complexity, com complex analysis, which is totally fundamental to all of physics after Euclid, um, you know, um, after Pythagoras, 2,600 years ago, and they're still just teaching Pythagoras in the school, as far as mm -hmm. I can make out. They haven't, got, they haven't got to complex numbers, which is actually what all mathematicians, all physicists are working with, yet, no, that doesn't crop up unless you get to university or something. Well, it used to. It used to. <laughs> when I went to school, you learned about complex numbers before you went to university. Is that so, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You and learn now? about cal calculus. Well, I, I, I don't go to school. I don't have children in school. So, <laughs> but, I, but I could certainly believe uh, that, that things have changed. Uh, I mean, in fact, what's, what, what strikes me has happened to mathematics, you know, this is sort of a little bit off the subject, but uh, over, over the years, so the years means two or three decades, uh, is, is, is that... The mathematics of the hard sciences, which is calculus basically, and, and maybe complex analysis, uh, in schools has been replaced by the mathematics of the soft sciences, uh, which is statistics, uh, and, 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 and spreadsheets, and, and stuff like that. So uh, for me, of course, that's a little bit of a pity, uh, because, um, well, I do hard sciences. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I would say that hard is good, because hard is much closer to uh, the reality of what we're at. Now, the complex number is the I number and the R numbers. Uh, taken together, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah taken yeah, together, yeah, yeah. Th these make up the complex number, and nobody can do any form of physics past the soft sciences, which is, I would say, the softest of the soft sciences is economics, okay? Yet economics is king, as a, as a so-called science. Uh, and in fact, it's so soft, it's, it's, um, it's just air. In fact, air is well, doing a, a favour to call it air. It's a retrospective science. It's a science in which you can sort of speak intelligently about what, what has happened. Uh, but if you try and speak about what will happen, you almost always will get it wrong. So it, it doesn't have this essential feature of being uh, dealing with you know, predictability. Right. So the human animal has gone right off in the wrong path. It has gone in the direction of the softest of all soft sciences, uh, in fact, giving it the name science is, 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 a, is a blasphemy or an oxymoron. Economics as science, no. Uh, and, and most people have gone off in that direction, which just relies on a few, on, on, on an integers, a few fractions, but... Well, so, I mean, some, 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 some economic uh, activities nowadays are fairly sophisticated when it comes to mathematics, for example, because, uh, well, they're sophisticated... Statistics, yes. In the use of statistics, statistics yeah. stochastic processes for, you know, for, for, for designing uh, winning strategies on the stock market, etc. Uh, and, and there's been Nobel Prize for, this, 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 for the development of, of, of ideas uh, along, along those lines. So uh, you, can be, you can be mathematically sophisticated actually about virtually anything. Uh, 
<laughs> so, so, I mean, and, and the, the question that 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 eventually one has to deal with is is uh, how much of the sophistication is is sort of uh, fancy window dressing, and 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 how and how you know what is what is the connection between the sophisticated mathematics and the essential features of the science you're trying to describe. Right. right. Uh, and in fact, when we come to the sorts of issues that you're raising here, I mean about reality and complex numbers and quantum mechanics, uh, this, this, this same issue is there. Uh, the philosophical question is, is the one about what is the relationship between the mathematics uh, and the physical world and one's experience with the physical world that you're using the mathematics uh, to, to, to describe. Right. Uh, in, in prior to our friend Albert Einstein, uh, Neil Spohr, and others uh, who dealt with this quantum mechanics over here, I mean, prior to these these people and 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 the and the introduction of uh, of modern physics, the relationship yeah. between the mathematical models and reality, I think, were essentially viewed to be what a mathematician would call an isomorphism. And isomorphism is a sort of a one-to-one -one correspondence between two things. Exactly. So in that sense, they're identical. That's what I was trying so to So the yeah. mathematical models yeah. would be regarded to really be a picture yeah. of what is actually there. Yeah. So that uh, if you have you know, a set of mathematical equations describing the motion of the planets or, 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 or uh, billiard balls on a billiard table, uh, in, in the old physics, every symbol in the mathematics had a correspondent property in physical reality. Uh, yeah. That has been lost in, 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 in modern physics. The yeah. relationship between the mathematics and the physical reality that the mathematics purports to uh, describe uh, is much more obscure and uh, philosophically taxing. And this upsets physicists just as much as it upsets non-physicists. Now, way back, 2,500 years ago, Plato yeah. I mean, this isn't a new problem. Uh, this is, this is the Idealism problem. and realism. Well, uh, that's too simple. <laughs> Plato uh, was very fami familiar with all the mathematical theories of the time. And um, in fact, he, he was a devotee of Pythagoras. He, he knew all about Pythagoras. Pythagoras goes up above here, and uh, everyone knows at least one bit of mathematics, or most people, yeah, and I that is that... The Pythagoras theorem. Yeah that this is a 90 degree or a right angle, this is a triangle, these are the lengths of the sides, A. If you square A, that is multiply it by itself, and dot is used as multiplication. So A times A plus B times B equals C times C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, this is still used today in multi you know, hyperfunctions, whatever, that still applies. That, that this is used. Now, in three dimensions, it might be like if you had another dimension going out here called D, then you could have, you could have D times D plus A plus A plus B plus B equals C. You can have a higher yeah. dimensional version. Yeah, you can have higher dimensional version. But basically, it's Pythagoras. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it revolves around some essential concepts, which is 90 degrees or a right angle, 90 degrees, that thing, and um, equals, no one have a question, what's equals mean? The, you said isomorphism. Mm. That is, if, if something's isomorphic... Well, isomorphism is not quite the same as equals, I wouldn't say that. Wouldn't you? No, well, that's an interesting scale. We'll go to that in a minute. But I mean, it's a quick question, of, because e e e e equals uh, seems to imply, uh, uh, well, uh, Quantification, for example, uh, you can plug numbers in this relationship and you get numbers on the other side. And so the numbers you get by doing the operations on one side of the equal sign are, are going to have to come out to be the same as the numbers uh, on, 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 on yeah. the other side. An isomorphism is much more like the concept of analogy. You know, there is this, there is this system and there is this system. They both look completely different in terms of what they're const constructed out of. Yeah, yeah. But the relationships between the pieces over here are the same as the relationships between the pieces over there. And you can identify one piece over here with one piece over there. Well, that's fair enough. But in the end, <coughs> this equals means exactly that. You can do the mathematics. Uh, you can do the mathematics over here. And whatever you do with this side, if you do the same with this side, 
No, you'll get the same thing. It, it'll work out. Yeah. Even though a squared plus b squared doesn't equal, doesn't look like c well, squared. Symbolically, it's not the same thing as c squared, certainly. It takes more ink Symbolically, it it's different, <laughs> and et cetera, but the equals is there to tell you, no, there is a relationship. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's called the relationship of equivalence. It's a particular sort yeah. of a, a, and, a and that's isomorphism is another relationship of equivalence, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. As is symmetry, in a sense. So Plato said that basically the symbols... Um, uh, were symbols for something that existed in a world that you couldn't see, you couldn't touch, in, in the Platonic world. Mm -hmm. And that's far more in line with quantum mechanics and what we would consider um, imaginary numbers. Uh, yeah. And whereas over here, uh, coming out of Plato, were, was someone like Aristotle, who took a different line, if I'm not wrong, Aristotle was much more into, you know, the hard and rigid line of rectitude. Mm -hmm. If you can't kick the bloody thing, it mm -hmm. isn't real. Mm -hmm. And there is no such thing as, as these mathematical worlds. There is no mathematical world. It's, it's just a, a world that the mathematics is just representing the real world. But the real world is that. That's thing. Plato said, no, the mathematical world is real. The rest of it's not very yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. You know, see, he had, a big, he had a different line here to Aristotle. And you know what? I think he's right. Well, I would say in the, the mod, I mean, I would I would say that in in, in physics, both are present, uh, and it's true that, uh, that 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 many people will argue for one rather than the other, but I think the reality in physics is that both both are, we can change color. Right. Good good uh, thing. You go present. red, I'll go blue. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't know whether we have this in the shot. Let me move a little bit to the left. Well, let's get rid of. Do you want to get rid of this? No, this is okay. Yeah. So 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 in classical mechanics. Uh, of, of, a, of a particle, so we just have a, you know, a single point particle. If you like to think about it as a billiard ball, that's fine. It's got, it's got mass, which means it's got weight. Uh, and uh, here is a, uh, uh, an equation. Uh, let's change that to R. Uh, so this is a quantity which is called the Hamiltonian. So yep. another one of these, these yep. people who are famous, this is called the Hamiltonian. Uh, in, 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 in classical mechanics. Uh, it, the value of this, of, this, of this quantity, if you put numbers in, is the energy of the particle. Yep. Uh, and over here on the right-hand side, this energy is made up of two pieces. This is the kinetic energy. That's the part, the moving bit. So that's the moving bit, dead right. And this part here is the potential energy. So that's the mass. Uh, the rest well, mass. That, that, that's, that, that's, that's the energy that comes from, for example, uh, if, I, if I take a, you know, a mass, uh, and I lift it from the ground up to this, this level here, then it, when it's up here, it has greater potential energy than it had on the ground. Yeah, yeah. So it's energy that, 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 that is associated with the, with the location. R indicates the location in space that this place is at. So it's energy that's you know associated what? with that I would location. like to say, to simplify this, that's the gravitational energy. Well, as, as an example, it's gravitational energy. That's to do with gravity. That is as an example. I mean, there are right. other forms of potential energy, but it can be gravitational. Now, now, my point is that this is a relationship, and this relationship plays a very big role in, in determining uh, the equations or the equ that, that tell how this particle moves. You start with this. Now, in classical mechanics, uh, these are a bunch of symbols uh, as I've drawn them. Now, if we, if we quantize that classical mechanics, if we, if we, if we now uh, want to use quantum mechanics rather than classical mechanics, this relationship stays exactly the same. Uh, except these symbols get interpreted in a different fashion. And in fact, this reinterpretation requires complex numbers. Uh, we, in, uh, a physicist put a little hat on the top of the yeah, symbol. Yeah. Uh, but the symbolic side, the, 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 the symbolism, uh, which is this side of this equation, yeah. uh, the relationships uh, are carried through uh, into, into, into quantum mechanics in a fashion that looks very, very similar. That's in fact, right. essentially identical yes. to classical mechanics. Except it's got imaginary numbers, isn't it? <clears throat> well, but what, well, what changes is the relationship between, between that symbolism and the, and the operations that they imply and this side of the equation, this side of your, your picture here. Because uh, there is a second side uh, which, which, to, which relates to reality in a very precise way uh, and that relationship relates uh, to this number, this yep. real business, in a very uh, important way. Because science is not solely about uh, relationships between things, uh, laws of nature, laws of motion, like 
Newton's law of gravitation or Newton's law of motion, F equals ma. Uh, science is also about uh, quantification or measurement. Metrics. Well, things that become metrics. You measure things. Yeah. The point is that the experimental side, the, the theoretical side, okay, uh, it builds symbolic representations of relationships and manipulates them and that becomes a theory. The experimental side of science is about real numbers because it's about measurements. Yes. Always. Mm. Whether if, if, the, if the theorist used complex numbers, imaginary numbers to do his analysis, nevertheless, the concrete connection with the physical yeah. world will always be a real number. I'm, I'm going, going to put myself on so thin ice. So these two sides are there together. Here. I'm going to put myself on thin ice and I'm going to question that fundamental axiom that's obviously very fundamental to what, how you, and not just you, but classical physics would see it. And that is that, hang on a minute, this world here found itself not dealing with real numbers, having to incorporate I, which I want to talk about in a minute, but more importantly, its view of reality was came down to what's called probabilities. No, well, this is a different issue. Ah, is it a different issue? It, 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 it came to be that all of this area, which is highly successful, never been refuted, the most successful theory of all time, it's been tested and put in applications and never, ever failed, but all it can ever deliver at the end of the equation, right at the end there, the final result for the experiment, when he tries to, comp he or she tries to compare their results with the, um, the theory, yeah. they use probabilities. They do not use real numbers. They use probabilities. Now, probabilities are something that was shocking to Einstein. He denied them to his grave. He said that the you know, God, God does, does not throw play Now, dice. of course, the real numbers that I referred to when I put this red thing around here, uh, uh, coexist in quantum mechanics with the probabilities because, of course, when uh, the numbers uh, that, that, that I referred to are the numbers that turn up uh, when you make a measurement. And when you make a measurement, you will get a number. You always get a number. You get one number. <laughs> now, if you repeat that measurement, if you do it precise, I mean, the, the way that probabilities... It's not a metric, though. The way that probabilities and, 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 and the real numbers, of course, relate to one another is that if you repeat exactly the same experiment in quantum mechanics, if you re-prepare exactly the same conditions and make your measurement again, you don't necessarily get the same number as you got last time. Or, or, and, and you can do that a billion times and you'll get a distribution of answers. And quantum mechanics tells you what that distribution of answers it, uh, is. Yes. Uh, and it never tells you, well it does, On some special, in some special situations it tells you exactly what you will get. But most generally it can't tell you exactly what you will get. And Einstein found that troubling uh, and for good reason. It's completely different to the way mechanic, uh, or the way physics ever had been. Uh, nevertheless, Certainly different to Aristotle. Yeah, but it has a very nice feature, and that is that it's wildly more creative than the, de than the determinism of, 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 uh, Absolutely. Of, of Newtonian mechanics. I mean, Absolutely. Newtonian mechanics idea, you know, this idea that uh, the world is basically a big clockwork thing. Yep. And if you know all the numbers that go in at the beginning, if you know the initial conditions, yeah. Then everything is pre is all deterministic the real and predetermined. That, all the real numbers that go in at the well, beginning. Well, they're all real numbers. I'll make a comment on real and imaginary in a second because these two things are not the same. The fact that it uses imaginary numbers is not the same. It could no. be using imaginary numbers and not have probabilities. It could be using probabilities and not have imaginary numbers. That's true. But uh, but I so they're two separate uh, my branches. Po my point is my point was that most people watching this, when you said it always involves a real number, they'd be thinking of arithmetic, but that's not the way the world works, and we have to get our head around it. But a lot of people have got their head around it. Probabilities are what it's all about. Um, so, so we should say something about this. I, 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 I have that. to say something about the R, the R and the I. Okay. Because, of course, a complex number is nothing more than, a pair, than two real numbers. I mean, this is, this is no. uh, one doesn't, the I always has to be in the back of your mind, but the I's relevance I knew oh, the eyes re only yeah. the only the <laughs> eyes relevance is that when you multiply it by itself it means minus one that's yeah. the only relevance of the eye the, the the number part itself I mean here is a general complex number we usually call it Z or Z if you're in New Zealand yes. and it's X plus there's your eye Y that's a real number that's a real number look and we normally we can we we, we often will just display uh, represent that complex number by a point there yeah there's the X this, this intercept, yeah. and there is the y, this intercept. And so, 
complex numbers are they, their strength is mathematical. They 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 they, they provide a, a mathematical methodology for analyzing things, for manipulating these pairs, uh, together of course with the with the i squared equals minus one, uh, the power of the i squared equals minus one. But you yeah. take you take you take you take quantum mechanics for example. The the the, the fundamental thing describing quantum mechanics is a thing called psi of called yeah. the wave function yeah, the wave, the wave function. function now this is a complex valued function that's right and when you, when when you one writes schrodinger's equation in the normal way of writing it this is a complex valued function complex yes. valued function nevertheless you can rewrite schrodinger's equation using two real functions two real functions yeah uh, you you write this psi uh, as, as as essentially an amplitude function yep uh, and an e to the i yeah, phase, phase we're, 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 I know, but that's logs. Yeah, this and is real. We're, we're, get, this is real. we're this going is... too far here. I'm, I'm going to assert my authority as, okay. the, as the man who can dictate what the, ca the camera. The direction. And I'm going to say that that's the traditional way. That's what you're teaching in school. That's what's in university. That's what's in the books. And it's bloody confusing. And it is not touching on something that people, there's a big elephant in the middle of this room. And all of physicists and mathematics are circling around it, and they're not sort of saying to each other, what's that big elephant doing in the middle of the bloody room? And the big elephant in the middle of the room is this, that if we draw up that, most people are familiar with this, okay? Yeah, it's a, 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 in a graph or something like that. And usually it has something like this, you know. Um, you know, here's, here's time going along that way, and here's profits. <laughs> going oh, along that way and out here, yeah but. and this is the most common graph so I'll use this and, and, and it works this way that as you go along this axis um, that's time is ticking by like here's year one here's year two here's year three the, the person saying well as we go along this axis here you can see that the profits are going to go up because this is profits going up you know here's 10 percent profits here's five percent here's two so that's that's a graph, and here's zero, and over here, and, uh, which is what the, the, uh, the salesman didn't want to talk to you about, was the fact that the profits might actually go down below that line, and this is negative profits. Negative profits is a very interesting which thing. Loss. It's called losses. Yeah, yeah. And over here is time before they started up the business. So over here we have negative time which is time historical it's time that happened before ground zero no, uh, zero time now recording. i believe most people will not be phased by that and i want to say that this is what i would call the linear view of the world the linear view of the world the w and, and basically linear view of the world comes from something called a line indeed a line. No, I won't even put an arrow on it. It's just a line, and on that line are things called points, like we could have x here, x1, and x2, and x3. And the, this, is, this line could be the line that represents the real numbers. So, uh, like 1 is a real number, 2 is a real number, and in between 1 and 2, there is, like, in the middle is 1.5, mm -hmm. which is one and a half. And the real not, number not thing says either. that there's any, any number of smaller, smaller numbers in there. Yeah, yeah. Now, going right back, uh, there are problems with this, uh, and that is that uh, there are two big problems. One is called infinity. And to this day, the linear view of mathematics has huge difficulties with infinity. It can't solve infinity. Infinity always means... This theory is stuffed. It's gone to infinity. Um, well, there are some situations where certainly uh, it can't. You don't want infinities. You, there are a lot Absolutely. of situations you don't want infinity. But there are other situations in which infinity is is precisely the uh, uh, the, the point of the exercise, and people get very excited about infinities. There's not only one sort of infinity. No. There's lots of infinities. The, I mean, there's this okay. guy. Uh, there's bad infinities, uh, and they are really bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. There's this guy. No, there's this guy Cantor. Uh, oh, Cantor, yeah, who, yeah who, that's who, right. Who made, made, made a life and death, in fact. Uh, it killed uh, him. It killed him, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but he, 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 
uh, worked a lot on, 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 on uh, issues related to uh, the nature of infinity. Well, there's lots of people worked on And infinity. the different sizes of infinities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, infi I mean, infinity is basically about limits, isn't it? It's what's happening as, as, as you, you change something and, uh, uh, like, like, like along this real line. I like that. Yeah. And, and, and um, I mean, you can talk about infinity in terms of the way you approach it. Infinity itself is a crazy concept. You know, it's just yeah. bigger than anything. Yeah. But, you can, but, but if you're approaching that uh, and not yet reached it, you're always dealing with something finite. You, so, finite limit? So you take a limit of something finite, and, it, and, and the way in which it's getting bigger and bigger right. uh, is, gives you a, gives you an, a now, notion of I want to keep this infinity. simple then. You mentioned limit. You had to. Because the problem with the linear view is that the real number system incorporates any number, in fact, an infinity of numbers. And in fact, there is an infinity of numbers between x1 and x2. Mm. And there is an infinity of numbers between x1 and 1.5. And in fact, there's an infinity of infinities. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what Cantor was basically saying. You can sort of add up an infinity. And infinity plus infinity does not equal to infinity. It just equals infinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Infinity divided by infinity equals infinity. So um, well, it has no the limit. Thing. There is no limit to it. Now, the trouble is that when you have no limits, um, things start to disappear. What is a point? A point is infinitely small and infinitely can be influenced. So the linear people always had problems, even with movement, you know, trying to demonstrate how, mo how you could move from one point to another, you know, oh, the yeah. turtle and the hare problem um, and, and all and that. Zeno's paradox. Zeno's paradoxes, which is a real paradoxes as long as you stay within the linear world. Now, what I'm going to put to you is that this graph that you drew up is linear if you just have x going up here and y going up here and you have a point here and it's called x1 y1 y1 and that point is like here's x here's x1 yeah. here's here's y1 and you can imagine that if you that x1 and y1 is got the value x1 y1 now that's the linear view and i've tried to show that both zero as an absolute zero, absolutely nothing, which is what is in here, and infinity, which is what um, y could go to, or any, two, any, point, any number of points between x, one, and, and zero. These are huge problems for linear things. So what happened was, I can't remember who did it first, but somebody said, well, hang on. If we make the y-axis, if we actually call it i, where i times i equals minus 1, that is, i equals the square root of mi uh, minus 1, minus one. Um, then, because i times i equals minus 1, therefore i is the square root of that, yeah. minus 1. Yeah. Now, he, he said, now if we do that, and we make this y-axis i, then we can get limits. And, and this is the tricky bit. So this is now x1 i y, where this might be one, uh, this might be i up here. That point is i. And this point down here is minus i. And this point over here is minus one. And this point over here is one. Now, that, that's this, and this, is 90 degrees, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. Okay. That's 90 degrees. That, that refers to this picture over here because uh, that, that angle there is precisely this angle around. That's here. exactly right. <laughs> now, what we've got now is the fundamental concept that has allowed something to enter mathematics for the first time in history: limits. Something can be limited because what can happen is that you can get a function that is a, an equation or something like that, and you can start out, say, here, this point x, mm. y, and you can keep doing something to it, and it will move around the circle, the circle, go through one, say, and come back to here. And you can keep doing 
that you're going to have many revolutions. As many revolutions. In other words, this is a revolution, which is, a, 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 in a sense, of not of having a you know shooting up the politicians, but a revolution in the sense of a, rep a repetition. That is doing something, applying the function once, then applying it twice, then applying. It. This allows that, and that repetition keeps taking you back somewhere to the same place, which is an equality. Yet something's going on, you're repeating it, but it keeps coming back to the same place. That's a limit. That's like saying, well, that's, that's, that's it, a it, limitation. It, it, that's right. not infinite. That's, I mean, the point is that that's... Uh, is that a power series? No, that's a periodic function. I mean, a I mean, periodic function. What? I mean, the point, the re, the, well, I mean, some, if, if the requirement is that when you go around here, you come back to exactly the same place and, you, and, and say your function has exactly the same value, of course, it's, that means it's, if, if, it, if, if this is happening in time, so as a function of time, it goes around and comes back, then of course it's periodic in time. And indeed, yeah. precisely this, this representation is, 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 is the reason that, that, that in advanced physics courses on, on period, this simple periodicity like a pendulum, it oscillates. If you do, if you discuss that, the first time you discuss this, 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 this lovely uh, example of, of, uh, of periodic motion, let's not do a pendulum, pendulum, let's do a spring. And on the spring, you've got a you've you've got a, a mass, a mass m, and there's a force of gravity mg. You pull the spring down, and you let it go, and we all know what happens. This goes up and down, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down like that. And we 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 say, okay, what's the position? So here we put an axis. Uh, we say we start there at zero, and we plot a real number. <laughs> we'll call it the position x up here. So what does x look like as a function of time? It looks like uh, some real number amplitude. That's how much we shift it to start with, and then it oscillates, cos omega t. So this is, a, this is a periodic function. If I was to draw that function uh, as a graph, uh, so here's time, uh, and this is x, and I draw it, it starts up here at a, uh, and it oscillates periodically, yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in a, you first learn about this with this sort of representation. Uh, when you get to a little bit more advanced course, they will say that it's much more convenient to analyze these problems using complex numbers. Exactly. And so well, you realize that uh, uh, we're running out of space here, so we'll <laughs> get rid of some of this. You use the fact that this x of t uh, is what's called the real part uh, of a complex number. Right. This which is, is exactly what you've plotted there. This is the real part Z of along t. here, x. That's, that, that, that's yep. right. That's, that's the real part. So here's the complex number. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, your example has this a equal to 1, so we'll put the a, a, a equal the to a 1. Take the a out. Yeah. Take the a out, and it's e to the i omega t. Yeah. And that complex number, as time varies, this angle gets bigger and bigger. And yeah. it starts here and it goes round yeah. around the circle. Now and I, it repeats. I it's periodic. Do, I want to do something that I believe um, will demystify this bloody thing. Because already 99% of people watching this are thinking, what the hell is that? E W I E. Let me put it up here. It's a, well, yeah, we E uh, I, which is I, this is the I. That's that I. I here. And uh, W, I call it a, a w uh, which is a, a, a complex number. No, that's no, that's a real number here. A real number, and T is a complex. And uh, T is a real number. The only complex part is this. Is, is this is I. the I. Okay. Well, let me put it another. Now, let me add to your equation here, <laughs> <laughs> because so we can see the. I mean, this is exact. This is the your equal sign. So it says you know exact. That's the same thing as cosine, the cosine. Everyone learns about cosines in school of of this real number, real number. That's a real number. Exactly. Plus, I times the sine. Of this real number. Yeah, so this yeah. number, taken as a whole, is complex. It's got a real part. It's got an yeah. imaginary part. Now, I I believe I can ex make that simply explained this way. Well, you draw a vector and let it go round around. That's a phasor. A a that's a phasor. I'm going to draw a vector because I I, I don't want to confuse people with terms. But I just want to say this: we, you know what a graph looks like. Uh, here's a slightly different graph where instead of having x as a real number, it's an imaginary number, i, where i times i equals minus 1. Now, if you go from here to here, that is an increase of 0 to 1i, which is i. Mm -hmm. And that, so therefore i equals, is all about the angle. i is all about the angle. Yeah, absolutely. As you go from here, as you go to there, that's a bigger angle and a bigger eye. Mm -hmm. Now, so what's happening here is there's two numbers in this system. There's two, two numbers. Um, one is 
the real number, and the real number is the length of that arrow, which is the x part, okay, or what's called... Well, the, no, it's not the x part, but it is the... Well, but it's the length of that arrow is, the real, is a real number anyway. There, there, it is a real number. It's a I real mean, the, number. There are two ways to write any one of these numbers. I mean, for our people who might be watching this, uh, let's, let's make this clear. Yeah. I mean, one, one complex number, which we might call z, yeah. uh, one way of writing it is to say that it's a real number x plus added to... Uh, uh, an imaginary part which has the value y. Exactly the same number can be written a different way. It can be written as a real number r, yeah. e, that's this funny fundamental number e, yeah, which is a logarithm. e to the i yeah. times a phase. So that real number is not the same as that one. Now, that one is not the same as that one. Very interesting. Now this term here, Phase that you mentioned. Now that's going to phase people. I, phases I, I the want to joy demystify. Angle. Your phase is your I know angle. exactly right. I want to demystify that. What, look, all we're doing here. Look, and there's logarithms involved here, and powers, powers up here, and complex numbers. But it's not complex. It's not complex. Look, what we've got here. As this goes round, the angle increases. That's sometimes called the argument. Yep. Right. Now, as the angle increases, that's reflected by the complex part. So the complex part of this z is the angle. And as, this, as something moves around here or changes its position, then the angle is constantly increasing until if it goes round, right round, back to where it started, the yes. angle is, as we all know, 360, 360 degrees, degrees, which is what a circle is. Yeah, yeah. So now we know what the hell a circle is. A circle is something where if you put it on a complex plane, as that's called, because it's a surface, and it's going if you put it on a complex plane and you increase the argument, that is the angle of the vector by 360 degrees, you've got a circle. You're yeah. back to where you started from. Now, so that explains what that where the hell circles come from. Next bit. Uh, all the this this XY part could be long or short. Well the length or shortness of it is represented by this part here, which is called the modulus, isn't it? This guy. This guy is called the modulus. The right? modulus. Now, 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 the modulus is a simple number. It's just a bloody number. It's not. It doesn't have i in it. It's just. That's a, the relationship. Or this is the same thing as the complex number by its complex conjugate. Yeah. Don't mention and conjugate. The complex conjugate is put a no, minus no, sign. You're, you're not helping. Class. You're not helping. Now let, let's stick to, forget conjugates for a minute. Uh, what, <coughs> what, 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 I'm going to introduce conjugates though, because I'm just going to hit my my big punch in a minute. Okay. Um, and that is that. So what we've got here is a system whereby, if obviously, if you go up to here, that's i. I equals one i equals the angle equals 90 degrees. I is 90 degrees. I times I, that is I and then I again, mm -hmm. okay, I and then I again is minus one. And we know that. That's what we said. That's the great beauty of it. I times I equals minus one, which is 180 degrees. 180 degrees is another way of saying go to the negative. Mm -hmm. Go to the other side. That's what negative means. 180 degrees. And then we go round here and that's uh, what, 270 is it? 270, That's 270. De 270 degrees around here is now um, zero. It's got a certain amount of. It's minus i. It's minus i, yeah. Sorry? It's minus it's i. It's i times i times i. It's i times well, i. Well, actually, it's e to the i times e to the, I, e to the three. Yeah, I it is i times i times i. Now, i times i is minus one times i is minus 1 times i, which is minus i. Which is minus i. So, yes, sorry, thank you for that. That's minus i. So, minus i, minus i equals 270 degrees. So, minus i is 270, plus i is 90. i times i is uh, 180 degrees, or we call that minus 1. And then, i times i times i times i is 360 degrees, which equals 1. Minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1. It's, it's minus 1 times. So it's back to 1. You started out at, at 1, you, you ended up at 1. In fact, uh, we've got that. Now, I, this is my punch. This is... I hope you're going to punch the board and not going to punch me. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not going to punch you. Um, <clears throat> And uh, even if I did, you wouldn't probably notice. But um, <laughs> here, here we have not. this. I would like to put it to you that I represents 
Plato represents, symbol for, something fundamental to the universe. Something, it's in a symbolic world, but it's actually more real than numbers. It's the most fundamental of all things you could ever get your head around. This is why I said it's my big, this is my big bang, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. In fact, it explains the big bang, and that is that I equals negation. I is simply whatever negation means, and you can have a, your own definition of whatever that term means. Oh, I squared, means. you mean by, by, because, it, because no. it gives, no. because something goes to minus one, goes no. to the negative itself. No, I squared is negation of negation. Well, it would be if I is negation, but... Uh, it would be, because I is negation. <laughs> this is my thing. I times I is negation of negation. Now, negation is an act. It's, it's I. That's why you've got it on the graph. Negation of negation is negation of something that is actually negation of itself. Itself, it's negating itself. When it negates itself, we call that minus. That's minus. Whatever this is, if you negate mm -hmm. it, you're minus. Mm -hmm. Now, if you then negate that, i times i times i, then you get But of course you can put minus, minus in front of everything. Minus i, because that's negation of negation, which is i, uh, which is minus one, say. And if you negate that again, then you get the minus of whatever it is, which is I. But the beauty of it is, and I don't know why in our universe, but I times I, time, so I times I, that is negation of negation, of negation of negation, is one, which is the limit. That's a limit, that's the great limit that we've been searching for throughout time, and time is key to this. That if you keep, if you negate the negation of the negation, you get back to where you started from. So that is a limiting function. That is something that if you keep doing it, you come back to where you started. It can't go anywhere. It just keeps coming back. That's limit, and I put it to you that that's actually what time is. Now, I don't expect you to even know what the hell I'm talking about, but I, I've tried in my best way to... To try well, I think, I think you've gone through an exercise of pattern matching, which, of course, is what okay. science is built upon. Science is built upon pattern matching. I mean, you know, we can, we can be su successful at science because there are, there are patterns out there in the world. When we observe things, we see under these circumstances, it always works out this way. It always happens the same. You know, we see that there are certain things that reproduce. There are patterns. I mean, they can be patterns over time in terms of the way things move. That's physics. They can be patterns in the bi biota or in the biological world in terms of the relationship or the similarities between the structure of species. There are patterns. So because there, is this, there are these patterns, we can recognize them and, 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 and build uh, and, and eventually recognize relationships between them, and we get scientific laws. Uh, mathematics is the language of patterns. I agree. Uh, and so that's why mathematics is, so, is, is the language of relationships. In some cases, it's very explicitly the, 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 the language of patterns. If you plot mathematical functions, they have patterns in them, etc. So it's very natural that mathematics is so useful in science. Of course, the, 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 the issue uh, as, as, as to whether you're doing something correct, uh, related to reality, and sensible, or not, is the way that you connect the mathematical patterns and the patterns in reality. And of course, that's what, that's what scientific theory building is about. Yep. And you, 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 you try and do that. Uh, and uh, in physics, you've mentioned uh, as, earlier on this, this business of gravity. And of course, uh, there is not yet a quantum theory of gravity. Uh, and, and, and it's regarded, therefore, as, as the, perhaps, or certainly one of the, perhaps probably the, uh, primary uh, objective of, of fundamental theoretical physics uh, to unify uh, or build, bring in uh, gravity into, into quantum mechanics. And, in, and in, in tackling that exercise, you're allowed to be as imaginative as you like. And, you know, the more mathematics you know, perhaps the better chance you've got of doing it, because your task is to find a mathematical structure, uh, a scheme of pattern uh, representation in mathematics, in which you can embed what we know about gravity and also what we know about quantum mechanics. Uh, Unlike uh, the, way, the way, way physics was 100 years ago or 150 years ago, uh, then uh, the, 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 the distance between the observed patterns and the patterns in mathematics was very small. 
you know, the mathematics sort of, because you could draw pictures of, of, of what the mathematical uh, equations were saying. Uh, you had this isomorphism, as I mentioned yeah, earlier. Yeah. And so uh, it, it, the building of a theory was no doubt still very hard because building anything out of nothing is hard. But uh, it was nowhere near as sophisticated. Uh, in modern physics, uh, the distance between what you know uh, through measurements about the, about the real world uh, and, and the patterns you see in those measurements, the distance between that and the mathematical and the mathematics that you will use to try and uh, reproduce those patterns can be enormous. And, and so it's very, di you can no longer make that leap solely based on intuition. No. Uh, and uh, it's quite possible we, 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 we reach a limit in which we will not be able to make that leap and that we, and that we will not uh, be successful in, in, in formulating uh, the, you know, the sort of the complete math, 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 well, mathematization of, of, of reality yeah, that we would like. Interesting point because, see, a few, last year, well, no, it was earlier this year, um, I, I interviewed a colleague of yours at the university from the philosophy department. I'm kinder to philosophers than most physicists. Well, I'm sure I don't. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sure that philosophy department professors don't often get together with physics department professors of conversation. But I think that's a pro that's a pity, because uh, the implications of what you said are. He would say if I rephrase that and said that you said it could be well be that the human consciousness gets to a limit where it can't. It cannot devise a, a pattern, which is its way of thinking, which is basically what you're saying. Mm. Um, that you know, consciousness is a patterning process, and we put it down in symbols and call it mathematics. Mm. But he 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 would say, I'm sure, no, there 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 may be a horizon now, but the horizon is doesn't have a, a an horizon, an absolute horizon. There is no horizon. You can keep yeah. going past the horizon and there'll be another horizon. And, you're, and you can keep going forever. And, you know, well, he, he, believe, he was happy with that. He can I, believe I that, I think. He, that. I mean, he can believe that and, and, and probably most people do. But uh, I don't think he or anyone else can know that. But, uh, well, no. But I mean, I mean, yeah. it, 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 it's, 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 it's very natural for human beings to think that, that what we are doing goes on forever. We can come back to economics here. One of the things that drives me crazy about economics and modern economic f functioning of modern, mo modern, modern economic systems and, and economic theory is it's all driven by growth, which, of course, I can, no I can, under I can understand why. I mean, that's very reasonable. I can see how, how growth make, makes it work. Uh, but the assumption that that can go for, on forever seems silly, of course. Exactly. It's no, a sort no. of a mindless activity. It, it, it's, it's, well, it's, <laughs> it's mindless, but it's, it's, this comes down to this problem, this limit. This is the issue. Is there a limit to how small you can get, i.e. as you approach zero? Is there a limit? Is there a zero? Well, well of course well, in physics there is. What do they call it? Zero point energy. Zero? Yeah, but physics, but physics in that sense is, not, is, is different. And it, sure, there, is a lo there, are, there are limits in the sense lowest energy, zero point energy. But, but physics, more, it would be better to say that, 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 that physics changes that notion of the limit in the sense that uh, in classical mechanics, for example, the lowest energy for a particle, it would be a point sitting at some location in space. It would, re you know, it would be this infinitesimal thing which you feel, you know, doesn't make any sense. Infinitesimal, yes. Yeah. But, in, but <laughs> infinitesimal, it's the yeah. infinity backwards. Yeah. But in, but in quantum mechanics, the, the, the limiting things are, are not points. They still have finite extent. Brilliant. And it's the, and it's the probabilities and, the, and the, the, the probabilistic aspect of the theory that allows that to happen. Quantum mechanics. So it fixes up some of these limits. Gives a things. big tick to limits and says there are limits. It Heisenberg, uncertainty principle. There is a limit. They're you not singular limits. Well, yeah. I mean, no, whatever. They're limits. I mean, this is this is the problem with black hole. This is the thing with black holes and and, and of course the Big Bang. I mean, in, in, in Einstein's theories, the, these things are their limits. They're singularities. They're called singularities. They're called singularities. Uh, and, yeah. and there are the points at which the equations uh, become zero point uh, energy zero problematic because you can't pass smoothly through them. Is that the symbol for infinity? Uh, you close it off on the right. Right. Now. Otherwise, the symbol for a fish. so there were two problems with uh, with uh, before um, Schrödinger. There were two problems in Heisenberg. That is 1929 or so, around there. Before then, um, Einstein was was king. You know, relativity explains so much uh, about the big world. 
Mm. But um, the small world was a, was a huge mystery, and he had a problem, like all people before him, Plato included, the whole lot, they had a problem with two things, zero and infinity. Quantum mechanics come along and said, well, there's a limit. There's a limit to zero. There's a zero point energy which is not equal to absolute zero, it, but it is zero. It's lower, zero in the sense of it's, lowest it, It's the lowest limit to what you can get. It's not equal to absolutely nothing. It is equal to something. It's zero point energy, but it is zero. And as for infinity, um, there, there is uh, no infinity because if you keep repeating that cycle that I just said, um, it's not a huge thing as you keep repeating it, and it's not getting ever smaller as you keep repeating it. In fact, it just keeps staying where it is. Mm -hmm. There is a limit. Mm -hmm. So in this quantum theory, it, gave, there is, there it is. for the first time, introduced real limits into mathematics and changed everything, except economics, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, anyone who knows anything... Really, this to me is the huge thing. But that, we know that even yeah. we know we we know. I mean, yeah. I mean, we know, we know that in practice, uh, these apparent limits uh, are generally never realised because they're properties of the limiting model that we're using of the world, or of whatever part of the world we're describing. So we can have an economic model. Uh, we build a model to predict how these ec economies are going to work and you know how much, how much GNP there's going to be, how much of this, how much of that. Yeah. And you can make certain predictions and maybe under some cer circumstances uh, y y your, your model will predict that things are going to become unstable and they're going to grow and they're going to go to infinity. Now, of course, that prediction is a... That's is, a bad infinity. That, well, that's a bad infinity, but it's not an <laughs> infinity to be concerned about because it's there because the, the modeling you started with is limited. Exactly. There are certain things that you left out of the model. I mean, for example, when things grow, uh, grow to such and such a stage, uh, your next door neighbor starts uh, uh, fe feeling threatened and comes in with a, with a knife and kills you and eats you. Well, you, know, the, 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 you know, there are, there are things that weren't originally in the yeah, model yeah, yeah. which will come into play uh, and, and uh, completely change the nature of the dynamics and the, lim and the limiting yeah, yeah, behavior yeah, is avoided. Yeah, yes. I mean, the, the, are these concepts related to, 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 to discreteness, to, to, to discretizing things that conventionally would be ah. considered to be continuous. Exactly. I mean, discreteness comes out in certain sense, comes out in quantum mechanics, uh, I mean, automatically. It does. I mean, and, and that, that is one of the big differences between, that's why it's called quantum exactly. mechanics, that's because exactly the word quantum means, means, of a certain, yeah. means of a certain size. Uh, Max Planck was the uh, beginning uh, of quantum mechanics. Um, specifically, what did Max Planck do? Uh, he was uh, attempting to uh, understand why the so-called spectrum of black body radiation is the way it is. That's very easy to explain. Uh, everything, every object, when it gets hot, glows. Yeah. Okay, now the sun is such a hot object that's glowing, but even a poker and a fire glows. Uh, and if you look at the frequency, if you measure the frequency uh, of, of, the, uh, of, of the emitted light, yeah. or measure, measure, measure how strong the different frequencies of, of, of the emitted light are. Which is the energy glow. they have. So that is related to the energy they have. You can draw a spectrum. You, know, you can draw, you can draw, you can draw a spectrum, this sort of thing. Uh, so here's frequency. Uh, here is uh, magnitude. How strong it is, magnitude. And for and for for any glowing object, the, this curve has a has a a, a fundamental shape, a, a predict pattern. a predictable shape, a pattern, and it depends only it depends on the temperature. If you make it hotter, uh, this peak moves out. If you make it colder, it moves in. But it has. It has such a, and, and, and classical physics could not get this. No. You, you, I mean, one thought, the class, the, there were classical theories which described the behavior of hot objects. Uh, so one thought one had the physics that would explain it, uh, and you w could not get this thing right. No. And Planck, uh, through a lot of uh, uh, manipulation and searching and trial and error, uh, eventually came up with a scheme that could get it right, uh, and it involved counting things discreetly. It involves, it involves the action of counting energy, essentially counting energy, in some fundamental unit. And you could not remove that counting process from the f end of the calculation. Uh, and the size of the bits that you, you, you counted involved this, this number called h times the frequency. Yep. Uh, and that's called Planck's constant. Planck's constant. And it's a fundamental constant of nature.
and that is the fundamental constant of nature that we've got so far. This runs all the way through. Runs all the way through all, quantum mechanics. There was no. There was no. I mean. I mean. This is. This is sort of very interesting to appreciate because even most physics physics students are not going to appreciate this. You know, the Planck did this work at the at the, the end of the very end of the nineteenth century, and uh, it, one did not have a, a what we call nowadays called quantum theory until the mid nineteen twenties. So there was quarter of a century where this thing was around, and people like Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr uh, uh, in invented little pieces of ad hoc theory that could explain this or could explain that. But no one knew how to put it all together in a fundamental, uh, as a fundamental self-consistent theory until, until Schrodinger and Heisenberg came along yeah. uh, in the mid-1920s. And then we had quantum mechanics. So there was this quarter of a decade where physicists didn't really know where they were going. Uh, they knew something was wrong, and they knew that, that certain elements appeared to be required to fix it up. But uh, it didn't make sense, and they didn't know where they were going. And what made sense was packets. Packets were the element that seemed... Things uh, are packets. Uh, uh, um, I mean, packets are needed, are needed to, make sense, I mean, to make, 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 make sense of even the structure of matter. It's not possible to come up with a... I mean, you know, this thing's made out of atoms. Everything's made out of atoms. Uh, it's not. It's not possible to come up with a, 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 a to construct an atom out of a, out of protons and electrons just using classical physics. No. I mean, all attempts lead to something that falls apart. The thing, the, the basic forces that hold the atom together, which is which is electricity, the electromagnetic force, uh, or the Coulomb attraction between the nucleus, the, the positive part which, and the negative part, is there. Which is basically photons. Uh, the photons are are are. Uh, it's basically photons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, in, in order to in order in order to 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 build a model of the atom, which you which which can hang together and be stable and not just collapse and and, and fall apart, one needed this notion. You know, one needs quantum mechanics, yeah. uh, and these packets enter in a fundamental way, uh, now, and that's of course what Niels Bohr uh, how, played, how played about, a huge role in. How about this then? Back to the old um, complex plane. Uh, I as one i minus one as a real number plus one as a real number mi minus i as a minus imaginary number. Now, if if we think of the photon as the process of going around there and coming back, then uh, you can think of anything that in here is contained within that. You can, that's called what a, a, a sort of a a loop, isn't it? A loop variable, or something like that. Well, I don't know, in some context maybe, but I wouldn't say, I wouldn't talk about the photon as being, I mean, your picture, of course, is, is central to quantum mechanics in a way that we haven't really mentioned, because in, in, in quantum mechanics, so we'll draw your picture again here, uh, and you, you, you want this basic notion of minus one, one uh, i uh, minus i, and starting here and going around. Yeah. Now, all circles are not the same. Uh, there is something which tells you uh, how, how, how long it takes to go around. So there's a frequency. Yeah, oh, how, yeah absolutely. Now, now let's call that frequency, we'll write it like, uh, like, like this. Uh, e, that's energy. Now in quantum mechanics, all, uh, at least in, uh, yeah, in, let's say all. In quantum mechanics, all dynamical motion is described this way. Yep. Every physical system is described in terms of lots of these circles. So, and in fact, which it sounds like we're going back to Ptolemy, but we're not really going back to Ptolemy. But it's, it's lots of these circles, and 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 the, a, a given physical system will a complete description will require to add together behavior of many of these circles, and uh, the different circles will only differ in this variable. They'll, they'll correspond to different energies, uh, and those energies generally are are, are are discrete and countable. So we can put an index there n. So this n can be equal to zero, one. Two, so it can be the lowest energy, the first excited state, the second excited yeah, state, the yeah. third, etc. And all of the dynamics is built out of, in fact, if we wrote it as a mathematical function, it's e to the minus i, e e n over h cross times now, t. You keep putting this there. I'd like to tell people that this e to the minus something just means that this, when you work that function, it means that if you go around here, you get a, a different value, but it's the same. It has a pair. It's the same after you go all the way around. Yeah, and I'd like to say this. It's the same, but different. And see, this is something that... Well, this, sometimes this, it's the same, but different. Sometimes it's the same, but the same. But it, <laughs> I mean, okay, I mean, sometimes but, it but exactly retracts itself. Much more interesting re, 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 is the same, itself. but different. Because much more interesting is the same, 
but different. It went round, so it came back to the same place, but it's different because it has gone round. And this reflects that fact. And you can often draw that as a circle, which is keep going round. But how about this? And this is what actually happens. It isn't a circle that just keeps going round and repeating. Actually, this is three-dimensional, and it goes like this. As you get a helix, sometimes that'll be the case. You get a helix, what people other, call can... a spiral. Yeah. So it is the same in some sense, but it's different in others. So what we have here is, we could say the same bit is the object, the thing, this is the thing of it, the thingness, the different part is time. So here we have something that stays the same, it has what you, what you can only call identity, it has identity-ness, which is a limit, that is, it doesn't go outside this, it's got something that's patterned, and, however, something is happening. Mm. Something is changing. Something is different. And that's the time bit. So I would put it to you that this might, this I-ness, this imaginary number, but it's actually the realest of all numbers, if you ask me, um, this is a reflection of, one, the x-axis is the thingness, the identity, and which is called the modulus, and the argument, which is the angle, which is all about I as it goes round, that's uh, the argument is the time aspect. So what we have here, in a simple way, is space-time. Wow. Space-time. That's what space-time is. <laughs> space-time is represented by a complex number that is you real could try, you could try that. You could try that a theory like that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if we're more honest with the way, with the way, the way, I mean, physicists would call this, this, uh, this bit that goes with I is called the action. The action. Of course, which is which is related to the moving aspect, to, to movement. To movement. And 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 to, and that's and to, time. to I mean, time. I mean, action has a very has a has a specific or technical definition in physics, but it has got some relationship. I mean, when physicists choose words to go along with the, with with the with the concept uh, in the olden days, they used to have some relevance to the concept. So you know, the physics notion of energy is somewhat related to what every a human being would call energy. But in the modern world, of course, physicists have just, uh, at some stage, decided to be just uh, a little bit, bit playful with their names, and you get things like yeah. quarks hey, and hang whatever on. else. Don't you, wouldn't <coughs> you agree that in quantum physics, energy and time are, are energy directly and related? Energy and time yeah. are equated; they are symmetrical. Well, they're, they're like conjugate, conjugate things. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're, they're a pair; they go, they go they together. They always go together. The you energy, the energy uh, determines the time evolution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The time, and what, how things. Th that's why time. I would say time really in physics is more about in what they call energy time is about energy yeah yeah and energy is about the energy the, here tells me how fast i go around here tells, that's the tells, argument tells or the action as you around. put it and this is how the complex number the simple thing of saying i times i equals minus one opened up the possibility to a new world and okay you can you know and people will laugh that I equals negation, but that's just me. That's my pattern. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> uh, and I believe that philosophically, I we we can get we can draw a huge philosophical payload from complex uh, analysis. I would like to uh, be able to say I think I have an idea about what that angle actually is. I think I know what I is. I think I is very important. In fact, it explains all the, all the other stuff. Uh, and don't have any more time here, but um, you know, it, well, one day we can. It's philosophically very, very important that we move from I uh, from R, which is arithmetic, Christ, to I, which is complex analysis. What which. I, I would call this is simple, this is addition, this, you know, the everything of all addition of... Uh, it's counting. It's counting. Basically it's counting. counting. And it's assuming there are things to count, but it always had trouble figuring out what the hell are those things that we count. Down here a complex analysis, first we have limits so we know what to count, that is we, we actually have things that keep going around that we can quantify, something like that something like that and secondly so that means zero is not absolute and secondly we because it goes round and it's repeating we get something that's the same but different and putting the two together we can actually understand what space-time actually is i.e. that's an existence theory 
That's a theory about existence. So we, this is philosophically, not just mathematically interesting, this is important, you know, to move from counting to complex uh, uh, analysis and, uh, and realise that this is real and this is only a small and not very real part of it. You make stimulating statements, but I guess I should, I sh I guess I should say this, that, that, that uh, I mean, one, one gets, I, I relatively often get things through the mail or over the email, you know, with stimulating statements in them. Uh, yes. and, and, um, and occasionally I, someone I, with a camera. I, well, only occasionally someone with a camera. And, but but what, something that, that, I, that I'm sure you appreciate, appreciate this, but, but, but some of these people, of course, are, are, are simply flakes and don't appreciate, appreciate this, and, th and that is the following, that, that physics, science in general, but physics certainly is an extraordinarily hard taskmaster. You have to get everything right. The point is that there is, an in, there is a huge number of tests and with something that, that can be applied to your ideas. Yes. And uh, n nowadays, you know, in the, in the 21st century, if we're asking about building a, a, a modification to current notions about quantum mechanics or a theory that can incorporate gravity, you basically have to get everything right that everyone else got right and add something. Exactly. And it's very hard to start with to do something that's substantially different than what's conventionally done and get everything right that everyone else has got right. And, and getting right here means... And something right they didn't get right. And then also <laughs> something right, and, and indeed, yeah. because, because this, this of course is, I mean, we, we, we haven't talked about strings and string theory, but you know, string theory is, has been for 30 or 40 years yeah. uh, the, the sort of most popular approach to trying to build a theory of, which incorporates quantum mechanics and gravity. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are certainly many people around now who, who, who have be become fairly convinced that you know, string theory is, going, is, is not going anywhere. Uh, uh, not everyone is going to say that. There are, there are lots of people working in the area and, 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 and still people who will support that it's worthwhile continuing on. But one of the primary criticisms is that uh, you know, they just simply haven't come up with anything uh, that is testable, anything that is new. So there's yeah. no way that you can show this theory could be wrong. Uh, yeah. We're not particularly interested in, 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 in speculative ideas that can't, be that can't in principle be negated, or at least the stage. Well, that was that that that, that was uh, was it has Poppins, been pop 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 Popper's Popper, Popper, one of yeah, his yeah. tests of uh, of the things yeah. have to be be able to, of sci uh, doing science of you have to be able to, refute, to, be able to refute, refute something. But but so 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 having stimulating ideas and 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 and, uh, and drawing and drawing analogies uh, or building models out of words and, and 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 you know concepts, patterns, and equations that that to to oneself make sense is. Is, is, is the starting point. Uh, the ending point is, is, is convincing the rest of the world and that, is, that, that means being able, I mean, performing the, 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 the magic part of, of or, you know, why, why has science become so prominent? It's because it's, it's proved to have the, 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 uh, the power of a magician yeah. that, you, that, that, that you can do a demonstration, so, uh, which, which convinces the person that you're talking to uh, that when they go away and leave you and think all, all on their own, they can take your ideas away and they can try them out for themselves. Yes. And they convince themselves, oh, he was right. Yeah. And, so, and they can do that in private. So they don't have to sort of tackle with the ego issues that are always there when I'm talking to you and you know, I'm not going to accept what you say and you're not going to accept what I say. But if I take away what you have described to me and I can go into my own garage and I can put these pieces together and I can do it for myself and find out, yes, it works out exactly that way, that's the magic that makes science so powerful because that's what it's done over and over again. Yeah. And I, th I find that to irresistible. So, with my pencil and paper, I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do that. It's well, the whiteboard and the whiteboard and the marker. I haven't convinced you, but uh, you haven't convinced me. I'm totally stuffed. So I'll continue with the my theory. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.